I'm James Frazee. I am a producer and uh, engineer and mixer. I do a lot of work with Patti Smith and Ian Hunter. Uh, made some records with Sharon Van Etten. Um, and in addition to those things, I produce a podcast called Gear Club, which is a music industry podcast where we interview uh, producers and musicians. Um, and I use Split EQ a lot uh, in, in that capacity to clear up poorly recorded audio uh, or to clear up internet recorded audio over, um, you know, over things like Zoom uh, that are really hard to understand. So today I'm going to show you guys some ways that I use Split EQ to help clean up dialogue for the podcast. Uh, this first example is going to be an interview we did with Terry Winston at AES a bunch of years ago. So yesterday I did Modern Classical. So we had great brain trust. Do you know John Newton? It's like 92 Grammy nominations for... Yeah. It's a ridiculous mm. number of Grammy. I can't remember. Mm. 16 Grammys, 18 mm. Grammys for classical. So it was a great... That was a great panel. And then um, Saturday I'm doing one on album production. Great. That's awesome. And then there was a diversity and inclusion one on Wednesday. Um, and this was recorded in an untreated conference room. So there was some room tone happening. Um, ev not everybody was always right on mic. And, uh, you know, there was some rumble happening from other exhibits. So there was some cleanup work to be done to really make the, the dialogue intelligible. I'll play you an example. Here's Terry without split EQ. Yesterday I did Modern Classical. So we had great brain trust. Do you know John Newton? It's like 92 Grammy nominations for, it's a ridiculous number of Grammys. I can't remember, 16 Grammys, 18 Grammys for class. So not too bad, but it could be better. So here's with Split EQ. Yesterday I did Modern Classical. So we had great brain trust. Do you know John Newton? It's like 92 Grammy nominations for, it's a ridiculous number of Grammys. I can't remember, 16 Grammys. So much clearer, you're hearing less of the room. Um, and by itself and in a, you know, in a kind of sterile environment, it's not a huge difference. But the place that, that really makes the difference is when you're listening to a podcast, you're probably listening in a car or, uh, you know, or in a subway. And when you get floor noise, that much floor noise going on, having that clarity is really essential so that you don't have to make things overly loud or compressed for them to be intelligible. So I bypassed all the bands. First thing we're going to do is go down and actually set split EQ to vocal. So that's going to optimize it for, uh, you know, a vocal signal. And I've already done this, but I went in and changed the amount of decay that the transient is going to be expecting. So I boosted it a little bit. Um, so we're getting more information in the transient part of the signal, uh, which for Terry's voice was really helpful. And for that, I just went in, soloed the transient. Yesterday I did modern classical. So we had a great brain trust. Do you know John Newton? It's like 90. So if we drop that too far down, it starts not getting enough transient information. 16 Grammys, 18 Grammys for classical. Boost it up. That was a great. And that sounded about right to me. So first we're going to go to the low cut, cutting out some rumble, um, but not cutting out quite as much on the transient side so that Terry's voice can still feel very full and present. Yesterday I did Modern Classical. So we had a great brain trust. Do you know John Newton? It's like 92 Grammy nominations for, it's ridiculous. So then moving through on this band, just in the tonal, um, tonal side, I'm pulling out a little bit of low mids. Uh, and I got to that by just kind of, you can boost this and kind of move around and find where that room tone is going to be. And it's going to be different for every room. For this one, it was around 150, but... Yesterday I did Modern Classical. 
So we had great brain trust. Do you know John Newton? It's like 92 Grammy nominations for... Yeah, right there. It's a ridiculous number of Grammy. I can't remember. And then we can just pull it down. Oop. Pull out some of that room tone. Yesterday I did modern classical. So we had a great brain trust. Do you know John Newton? It's like 92 Grammy nominations for... It's a ridiculous number of Grammy. I can't remember. 16 Grammy. So then, for some added just general presence, we have a high-end boost around 5K. Um, and that's just using split EQ kind of as a regular old EQ. And something that's worth mentioning is that beyond the transient and tonal split for split EQ, it is a fabulous sounding equalizer. Um, it's, I use this for, uh, for music as well. I use it for mastering. Um, and I'll use it even if I don't need to use the slick trick of splitting the transients and the tonal qualities. So let's play that back. Um, Yesterday I did modern classical. So we had a great brain trust. Do you know John Newton? It's like 92 Grammy nominations for... It's so last thing I did was just a little transient boost at about 8K, and this was to add a little sibilance back into Terry's voice. Um, it felt a little lacking to me, and when you lose those S's, uh, intelligibility is, you know, really suffers. So just a little pop there, and we are back to my settings that I put together for her. Yesterday I did modern classical, so we had a great brain trust. Do you know John Newton? It's like 92 Grammy nominations for, it's a ridiculous number of Grammys. I can't remember, 16 Grammys, 18 Grammys for class. And there you go. So that is how I would repair dialogue like this in an untreated room uh, for clarity with split EQ. It's really fast. It's very easy and intuitive to use. And if you don't know where to start, there are a ton of really great split EQ presets in the newest version. So in this next example, we have an interview with Jorma Kaukinen uh, that was done over Zoom. You know, the whole story is hard in this, in this day and age. It's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But, you know, when I started out playing fingerstyle stuff in 1960, I only listened to two records for about a year and a half. End of story. And that's all I focused on, you know, because cause that's all I had. Actually, I can't take credit for it, but, you know... You know, now today, kids are buried under all this stuff. You know, when when my daughter, who can also read, wants to do a Billy Joel song, she gets the sheet music and looks at a YouTube thing, and a couple hours later, she plays and sings the song. It's ridiculous, you know? Yeah, yeah. Right. And all of the audio was recorded through Zoom, so you have, um, you know, not only the band filtering that happens uh, in the Zoom audio recordings, but there's also issues with um, connectivity in this particular instance. Uh, and Yorma is in an untreated office, so it's very echoey, and you can hear a lot of the room in the audio. So check this out without split EQ. In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But, you know, when I started out playing fingerstyle stuff in 19... So there's without, here's with the treatment of split EQ. In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But, you know, when I started out playing fingerstyle stuff in 1960, I only listened. Much clearer, you're hearing less of the room, and in a, no, in a noisy environment, it's going to be way more intelligible than it would have been. Um, so let's, again, go through bypass everything, and we can talk about exactly what's happening with the equalizer. So the first thing that's going on is I am boosting just the transient part of the signal by about 2 dB. You can do that over here. Um, so reducing the tonal quality, boosting the transient quality of his voice is really, really going to help with, um, with letting it cut through. Next. 
we got some low cut going on. And this is just a very simple low cut, you know, no, no splitting the transient or tonal. Moving up, I'm actually boosting around, um, around 100 hertz uh, to maintain and add body to Yorma's voice. This is, again, something that is going to inherently be missing from a Zoom recording, uh, that, but it really helps with making the voice sound very forward and present. Uh, so let's hear what this sounds like. In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But, you know, when I started out... So a little bit better, but there is a lot of room going on in that. So I'm going to dip out just above that at around 170. Um, very minimally split between the transient, a little more tonal pulled out than transient. Um, let's hear that. In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But, you know, when I started out playing... Great. So now a little boost of just the transients around 1K. Again, adding presence. We're adding presence. We're pulling out, you know, muffled mids. Um, let's hear that. In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But, you know, when I started out playing fingerstyle stuff. And so at this point, let's, let's bypass for the original. In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But you know, And then with these uh, additions. In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But so next, let's continue on with these kind of broader strokes. I've got a high frequency boost. It is a little bit tonal, mostly transient. And then I am cutting both transient and tonal, but at very, very different points. Uh, so the tonal, I'm cutting, you know, way up at 20K. Uh, the transients, I'm cutting around 8K. And, you know, this was very particular to this recording. I, I just kind of played around with, you know, where these curves were going to sit, and this ended up sounding best. But with that high-frequency boost, which was wonderful, for air and presence, we also got some nasty stuff high up. So that's why that sits there. Let's hear what this sounds like. In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But you know, when I started out playing finger... Okay, so after these broad strokes that are taking care of some general issues in the recording, uh, I'm gonna move on to some more, you know, specific issues with this particular recording. And that is, uh, you know, really pulling out some of that mid-range room tone that's muddying the vocal and also pulling out some, um, some high mids that are contributing to the sibilance uh, in his voice. So one of the neat things about Split EQ is you can solo any of these bands. So this is where I made, you know, that mid-range cut. But before we do that, let me solo that band up. We'll play it back. In, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But, you know, when I started out playing... So, uh, you know, and again, a good way for any specific recording, because it's not always going to be at this frequency point, you can kind of grab boost while it's soloed. In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But, you know, when I started out playing finger style stuff in 1960 i only listened to two records for about a year and a half end of story and i just stop where it kind of gets really nasty and then i'm going to pull out that frequency range to taste and we can unsolo that and play back in this in this day and age it's really hard to to do anything new or to discover anything new but you know when i started out playing and it's subtle but you get a little more clarity and then with the sibilance, same idea. And we can solo that just to, just to check out that frequency range. In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But, you know, when I started out playing fingerstyle stuff and I... And we can click that on, hear it with. 
in this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But then without? In this, in this day and age, it's really hard to, to do anything new or to discover anything new. But you know. So, yeah, that got rid of some of that sibilance, some of that room tone, and really adds to the clarity of his voice. So these have been examples of how I use Split EQ, uh, you know, in my podcast work. But I also use Split EQ for uh, music, for film. Um, and it is, you know, beyond being a, a kind of a revolutionary um, tool as, as far as splitting transient and tonal properties in a signal. It's also just a fabulous sounding equalizer in and of itself. Um, it is always in my mastering chain and, uh, and I love it. Um, Eventide has a great 30 day demo period for Split EQ and all of its plugins. I would highly recommend that you go check it out, use it on a few things and uh, really see what this thing can do for yourself because it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm.